We're back with the sports call, and it is what it is. It's a night for you to call us at 412-575-2600. hate when you say That's the number. You can also tweet us. I have an almond stuck in my I'm trying to get that out as I talk. That's uh, what I want to hear. At, Something like that. Not it is what it is. At Gene Collier's Gene's Twitter address. <laughs> is my Twitter address. We'd like to take those. And we have this, uh, and this is regarding Tom Wilson, who if you did not see the videotape, we played it at 6. We'll have it again at 11. It was a preseason game, and yet he went headhunting again, this time on Oscar Sundquist. Uh, Mike Yo, their head coach, called it predatory. Uh, he went right after, direct headshot, and now he has a hearing in person, which for him, given a repeat offender, he's looking at six games, I would think, which means he won't be here on Thursday to open up the season. Uh, but Jim Ross says on Twitter, consider that his suspension on the hit on Zach Aston Reese was three playoff games, which is the equivalent to seven to eight regular season games. I don't draw that comparison. It's like a preseason game. I hit it as a hit. It doesn't lessen the head trauma. I don't care if it's a playoff game. You should get the same. And three games to me wasn't enough. Do you think 10 is enough? So that's my question to Eugene. Do you think mm -hmm. 10 is enough for a guy who's a repeat offender and continues to do this, even though he's a pretty good hockey player? Is there a maximum? I'm, you can, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know uh, if there's a max, but you can go probably as high as you want. We've seen 25 game suspensions to people. Yeah. Before. Well, Tom Wilson has problems. I admire his skill. I think he is a very fine player. Yeah, but he is. But he's got problems. He likes to hurt people. And the NHL is trying to get that out of the game. And all leagues should be trying to get that out of the game. They really should. And, you know, bottom line is he's too talented to do this. He signed a six-year, $31 million right. deal, uh, and he broke Zach Aston Reese's jaw, gave him a concussion. And now Sunquist apparently is in the same position there, where broken facial bones and a concussion. How much more damage is he going to do before the league finally says a message and a strong one that this we are not tolerating it, period? And we'll see what they do in this case. He has his uh, meeting with um, the Department of Player Safety on Wednesday, the day before the game. So let's go out to the Lions. Lots of people. Marilyn and Monhall first tonight. Hey, Marilyn. Hi, gentlemen. I was wondering who's responsible for uh, covering the tight ends. Yesterday, Pittsburgh really got decked by um, uh, the the Ravens with their tight ends. Well, I thought it both teams had pretty good success. Linebackers mm -hmm. or is it, it depends. the uh, defensive call? Uh, Marilyn, that depends on how you strategize that. A lot of times, linebackers can't run with tight ends. So, Gene, who would you prefer? Well, generally, it's a safety. Um, but, uh, you know, safeties have a lot of responsibility in the different coverages and, um, you know, sometimes they are assigned specifically to a site, to a tight end in certain coverage and other ones uh, you know they they get help from linebackers or corners you know it's complicated I don't pretend to understand it but uh, you're right I mean it, but it's not just tight ends anybody uh, can run free in a Steelers secondary well that's true there's a lot of space out there and you know the tight ends typically you saw John Bostick try to keep up with Travis Kelsey he was just a step behind but a beautiful throw by Mahomes yeah. put it right where he, nobody could defend it yeah. Uh, and the Steelers have had problems with guys like Rob Gronkowski, matchup issues. And, you know, hopefully Vance McDonald and Jesse James will give that problem to other teams. Let's go to Mike in Altoona. Hey, Mike, how you doing? Hey, Bob, Gene. How's it going? What's up, man? Hey, Mike. Uh, I'd like to speak about Bud Dupree, if I could. I made it a point to watch him specifically yesterday. And I want to tell you, this guy has no football instincts. Uh, he runs himself out of almost every play. And when he... When he's blocked, he has no chance of making a play. Sometimes he runs into a play when he's unblocked. But he has absolutely no instinct, and it just goes to show the weakness of our linebacking core that we had to sign this. What do you think? Well, they had to switch those two. They chose to do that to make it easier for Bud Dupree to get to the quarterback, and he's had a couple of sacks, plus he's had a pick six. If you look strictly on statistical information, it looks like he's off to a good start. But I also think he's not been in on the majority of plays that I thought he could be in on Gene. So I think there's still a mixed bag out on him. I think that's an excellent call. Um, I think, you know, Bud does have uh, better stats this year. He has a pick six, as Bob said, and a couple of sacks. But you're right. Um, Keith Butler said as much, you know, in explaining why the uh, outside linebackers were flipped, you know, uh, Watt to the left side and Bud to the right. It was because Bud was just running past the quarterback. And that goes to what the caller is saying about instincts. He does not have really good defensive uh, instincts. And as for the, you know, the general talent in the linebacking core, this is as low as I, I can ever remember it. Line two we go. It's David in the south side. David, welcome to the sports call. How are you? Okay, um, thanks for taking my call. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to make a statement that after um, 
the Steelers beat Baltimore last year and kicked them out of the playoffs, I think Baltimore's coach, in his mind, was to try to get people, make a game plan, and beat the Steelers. The Steelers weren't only beat yesterday, but the score don't dictate it. Um, there were a couple calls that weren't called. Actually, I mean, they were just outplayed, outcoached. The second and third line is terrible. They need, a, they got a lot of work to do. Yes, they do. So, Gene, that's the question. How much work can they do to improve? And they got a team coming in here in Atlanta who is just as desperate as the Steelers are. They're one and three, a worse record. But Matt Ryan still has 10 touchdowns, two interceptions. Yep. Julio Jones does not yet have a touchdown. He'll have one Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> and their defense has really been banged up with injury. So I would expect a lot of points in this game. But, I mean, what do the Steelers have to do? Let's start defensively. How can they make change? It's basically the same group of people here. We're not gonna, you're not going to see anybody yeah. coming in on a white horse who's going to come in and save the day. It's the same group. What do they do to get better? I don't know. They have to figure out a way to get pressure on somebody, uh, you know, particularly Matt Ryan, who's excellent in my view. Some people feel like he's overrated, but I think he's tremendous. I do too. Um, uh, yeah, they have, they have very few options. I mean, they have to get healthy. Mike Hilton is a key player for the Steelers. He was not able to play. Um, you know, I've advocated for um, uh, Matthews to play uh, inside linebacker, but Bostic has done a little bit better job than I thought he was going to do. Uh, they really don't have a lot of options. I think their best option right now, even though they may be afraid to isolate guys one-on-one -on -one in their secondaries, to blitz more. They hardly blitzed, mm -hmm. and I would expect in order to really get to a quarterback, you've got to put some pressure. Flacco over the years when they've had success, right? Yeah. They've been in his face. They've strip-sacked mm -hmm. him. The ball's come loose. You can't let him sit back there. He's too good, yeah. especially on the deep ball. To but make you're it. right. That's when they had really good cover corners and safeties. Right. So they've got to trust somebody at some point. Yeah. Let's go to Kurt and Harmer. Hey, Kirk, how are you? Hi, guys. How you doing? What's up, man? Hey, listen. Based upon what I observed, observed during the preseason and the last couple of years, Tomlin has lost complete control of this team. Discipline When you wise. say last couple of years, what are you referring to? Because they were 13-3 and three last year. But um, the discipline, the behavior on the field, not okay. counting off the field behavior, behavior on the field is just atrocious. They're sloppy. They're not... Fully going through on their blocks, they're not they're arguing with arguing with the umpire. What's that going to do? Fighting it, infighting against with each other, arguing. It's crazy. A B. What kind of behavior is that on the sideline? That's nuts. Tomlin has lost total control of this team, discipline wise. Do you agree? Well, I agree that the Steelers um, often look undisciplined on the field, and we know they're undisciplined off the field. Some of them, anyway. Uh, but I'm not sure that they're worse than other teams. I mean, you know, I watch a lot of football when I can, and uh, I see the same kinds of things, the same kind of acting out, the same kind of penalties, the same, same kind of stupid penalties. And, you know, I see that on every team. I don't know about you, Bob. Steelers do lead the NFL in penalties this they year, do, yeah. which is different than what they've been. They typically are not at the top of the list yeah, here. So. They cut it back down to five on uh, Sunday. Right. But prior, prior to that, they were 12, 12, 13, I believe. Yeah, that's quite a bit. All right, we'll take a break. Come back with more of your calls right here live at Pittsburgh CW.